to charge super capacitors, I recommend using a bench power supply such as this. Um, if you can make your own system to charge them, uh, that's that's okay too. The capacitor doesn't really care where the charge comes from, but uh, you have to be aware that uh, capacitors can take in and discharge a very large amount of current. And one problem with a lot of power sources, such as a, a battery or whatever, is if you attach them directly to the supercapacitor, the supercapacitor starts off with zero resistance, basically. And so all the current that the battery can provide or other power source uh, will be will be applied the the maximum and usually they're not made for that usually they're made for a resistive force so this bench power supply uh, when you deliver power you also send uh, you set the maximum current that you will allow and normally that's to protect components but in this case the uh, amount of current you set on this uh, bench power supply will be to protect the power supply to keep the power supply from applying too much current and uh, I have some resistors on these uh, super capacitors this is to make sure they're they're completely discharged and uh, these are 100 ohm resistors and you have to make sure if you do this to make sure they're discharged and I recommend you do something like this before you store them otherwise uh, a stray piece of metal can come across there and uh, the, if there's uh, enough voltage and stored energy it'll cause a short and uh, it may even start a fire or something They're, they store that that much energy so it's a good idea to, to leave a, a fairly low value resistor on there at least uh, until you're sure that it's completely discharged. I now have set this power supply to 2.7 volts. That is the maximum amount of voltage these uh, supercapacitors are rated for. The number is right, uh, right there. And uh, it also says 500 farad on there. So you don't want to give this more than a 2.7 volt charge and uh, you want to give the, the black lead, the negative side, to the negative side of the capacitor. That's the two main things you generally have to worry about with the capacitor. They can probably take uh, any amount of current that you can send their way, so that shouldn't be an issue. And now with this meter, to, uh, to adjust the voltage, I turned the, the current all the way up, and uh, as you can see when it's all the way down, uh, that, that voltage doesn't show up. So with this particular meter you have to turn it up and I'm sure all meters are different this is uh, the one I got this is the most economical one I could find that that looked decent so this is the one that I'm using I attached the alligator clips to the supercapacitor and I'm making sure it's on negative I set the current down to zero while I attached them to uh, make sure before I give any charge that uh, everything is proper and uh, so now it's just sitting there doing nothing let's adjust the current so that it goes up and uh, I'll stop when it says 3 now this is going to be 3 amps and slightly above 3 amps you can see up here the, the voltage is going up and that's how you know how much the capacitor has been charged so far uh, once it's at uh, 2.7 volts, you will know that the uh, capacitor is fully charged. And uh, as you can see, it's going pretty quick. It's putting in 3 amps right now. And uh, amp, amps are uh, amperage is basically it's counting uh, how many electrons are flowing in one side and out the other. And uh, not that's not three uh, electrons it's a it's a whole bunch of electrons but uh, it's uh, basically three groups of uh, electrons in uh, in one second and we're about charged now 
and you'll see that it stopped and uh, the current's going down now because it's uh, finishing up the charge and it's given less current and once uh, once that's done we'll know that we have a fully charged supercapacitor so they they uh, fill up pretty quick they take a lot of current we stopped at three as I said before because that's what this bench power supply is is rated for and uh, I don't want to damage this now uh, this can kick out quite a bit of current because it has a, a cooling fan in the back and stuff to keep its internals cold so that's why uh, I recommend a, a bench power supply it's harder to control the voltage if if you do something makeshift uh, but if you know how to do that uh, definitely go ahead but otherwise this is the only uh, way I recommend so I'm gonna cut this clip here it's uh, it's about fully charged so now I got the uh, multimeter um, it uh, didn't drop to zero the current uh, the uh, voltage drop uh, went from to 2.8 so then I put the current down a little bit and now now it's done done charging so uh, if I had to charge a bunch of these I would just leave it at this setting and uh, looks like it uh, pretty much evened out right now and we will take a reading and I think that the reason why the uh, the current is going up now is because uh, these these uh, capacitors have a little bit of uh, leakage they leak a little current so uh, I think it needs to uh, replenish what's leaking but uh, as you can see on the, the meter that's also basically exactly uh, 2.7 so uh, we know it's fully charged I uh, well I shut off the the meter but uh, I also disconnected the clips going to the supercapacitor and that was just maybe a minute ago not terribly long ago and now you'll see we're at a 2.65 and I'm guessing it'll drop to 2.64 that 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 quick um, these uh, super capacitors they don't hold their their charge as as well as a lot of them could that's that's not the meter draining that much charge that's just the uh, uh, the way these these are made they they don't uh, storm as as good as other ones so that's one thing you have to look at how long it will hold a charge and uh, but these are uh, according to the data sheet from the from the company that makes them they uh, will uh, you can charge them and discharge them I, I think it said about five hundred thousand times and so it's basically as as much as as you can and uh, they do deteriorate over time though I think you got to use them within about 10 years so when you get uh, super capacitors these are uh, Sam was uh, then the green cap put in all these all this information into uh, Google and you should find the sheet from the manufacturer uh, on their specifications and I will uh, discharge this one with the uh, 100 ohm resistor and uh, the main thing I have to make sure is that the uh, the leads of the resistors don't uh, touch each other and uh, I won't really make you watch all that there you go fit right on okay so I have the uh, resistor and even with the resistor there make sure I don't lose uh, contact there uh, we're at about uh, 2.5 it's it's been draining for for a few minutes since uh, the last clip and uh, so even with the capacitor as you can or the resistor it doesn't uh, drain uh, instantly by by any means this still isn't uh, uh, drawing a lot of current so you want to make sure it's in a safe place but it will drop a lot faster and also I should mention that the uh, the leakage is uh, worse the higher the voltage is when when I charged this uh, capacitor before it was about uh, 1.5 volts the next the next day 
it wasn't wasn't draining uh, as fast so uh, so that's another thing to, to consider here's a close-up of how I have the resistor uh, as you can see I kind of push the uh, the leads apart from each other uh, I've used this resistor before so it's kind of zigzaggy but uh, you just uh, make sure they're separated more than the pins there and then when you uh, attach them you want to make sure that like this wire doesn't make it to that side or vice versa and uh, as long as you don't uh, let uh, anything touch that creates a short and this resistor can handle the uh, wattage of uh, the current that's going to go through at whatever voltage it's set at then uh, you're good to go